What's up, y'all? It's Alexandria V, and welcome back to the Wall Street Ben Black Playbook. Okay, so we coming in hot. We coming in hot with the content. I'm so excited. I'm so excited that you all are loving the page thus far. So I would be remiss if I did not put the second video out and start it off with just kind of giving an update on where are we in the market right now? Like, what economy? are we in right now, right? Now is the time to build your portfolio. Now is the time to be building por your portfolio, to be trading, to pay your investment account because your 2024, 2025 self will thank you when you're sitting on a private island uh, getting massages by some shirtless man on the beach with a mimosa in your hand, right? or whatever, you know, whatever it is that you want to see on that beach, you need to be, your 2023 self is what's going to get you there, okay? I am so excited for this year that's coming up. Now, I'm not looking forward to how the economy is going to react, how consumers are going to react, and all of this, but I'm excited that I am a part of the group of people who understand that the stock market is the way. Investing, trading, real estate, doing all of these things is the way. This is how you build generational wealth, right? So for me, uh, one of the biggest things that I'm going to be looking at doing trading this year is swing trades. I already love, love, love swing trading. I think it is one of the easiest um, in safest ways to build your trading account up, to build that account up, um, is by doing swing trading. And swing trading also helps you to just zone in and really, really get um, good with technical analysis, right? Because you got to have your technical analysis and your charting down to feel comfortable enough to continuously hold a stock or to hold this trade day after day after day, right? Your charting needs to be on point with that. So I wanted to show you all a couple of swing trades that I am heavily, heavily looking at and hope you enjoy it. So first off, we're going to start with SPY and we're going to do a top down analysis, of course, right? Like, why would we not um, start this off with a top down analysis? So let's get this out the way over there. And we're going to go, um, the daily is fine. The daily is fine. Okay. So I'm going to scrunch in because I like all of the data that I can get on this chart, right? Because the more data that I have, the more accurate my plays are going to be. The more accurate my, um, my plays and my trading is going to be. So let me break it down to y'all how I have it. I chart with supply and demand. I use, I I'm a supply and demand trader, okay? Because I'm trading with institutions. I'm trading the same way that institutional traders, smart money, however you want to call it, whatever you want to call them, big big dogs, whales, whatever, right? Nancy Pelosi's husband. I'm trading with them um, and with their movements in the market. So the best way to do that, y'all's nephew down here acting a fool. The best way to do that is by trading, supply and demand, breaks of supply and demand. When you break supply and demand, it will always pull back. When you break structure, whether it's your trend lines or supply and demand, when you break structures, it will always pull back to retest it, okay? And knowing that, ingraining that inside of you, it will always pull back to retest the broken level, okay? Knowing this, one takes away a lot of the fear, but it also will stop you from chasing a trade. Why get in in the middle of an uptrend when you know it'll pull back? Okay, so down here is my demand zone. Um, green levels that you see on my chart is gonna be my demand zone while the red ones are my supply zones. Why? Because at demand zones, typically that's when we'll see this stock bounce. At supply zones, typically that's where we're going to come in and find resistance, right? Now there are levels of supply and demand in between this 302 and 370, or we could just say like there's a, um, we know like we have reaction levels in there, which uh, like around here at this 340, we can see, uh, we can see, let me make this wider, right? We can see like on this drop, it pulled back, 
made a high, but then this turned into a swing high, right? And the reason we know it turned into a swing high is because it crossed previous support in here. Right? So this kind of just kind of consolidated, and we could really even call this a drop base drop. Honestly, that's what we need to call it, to be honest. Now that I'm widening that out, this is a drop, a little bit of a pullback, but really a base, right? It based in here between 342 and 332, which can seem like a wide gap, but again, we're on that daily time frame, right? It stayed in that range, kind of, we see a pullback in here, and then dropped, making this move a swing high. And then this turned into a swing low because um, as it came back, it crossed previous resistance, right? So this swing low over and over. So listen, just knowing your technicals and understanding that is just going to help you. Okay, so we can clearly see that this broken supply zone, which is where we're going to find resistance at, right, has held SPY as a demand zone where we find support at since 2021. It consolidated in here from like November to December as resistance under there, broke above it, pulled back to retest it, took off higher, pulled back to retest it one more time. And that was that for down here at this 370, right? Now, so this year we did get this drop down there in June, June as well as in October. We know those days, well, in 2022, last year, because new me, you know, new year, new me all of that, and we got this bounce back up there, right? So, um, yeah, so we see like this 370 is a very important level. So if I zoom in now and I'm looking at this overall move in here, I see that this was a drop base. This is a beautiful drop, and now it's basing in here. So a base comes into play when there's any um, sideways trading consolidation, what you call that in there, right? But this is a trend. It can either be a trend continuing pattern or a trend reversal pattern. So when it breaks out of this base, which we're getting this around from like 386 down to 374, because I'm going to count all the way down to this wick, right? Um, some people would adjust their charts to in here, like around here, because you're getting like the most touches of support off of these wicks, Um like around in here, so at like this 376 level. But me, I just feel like might as well take it down to that wick just to play it on the safe side, right? The low of this candle was 382.69. I'm sorry, the low was 374.77. I said, what? So yeah, uh, that's beautiful, right? So, and then right under that, if it breaks that, we're coming right back. We know it's going to come down here to this uh, demand zone. What is a demand zone, right? Now, the reason why I changed it red is just for video purposes because this should this is acting as a demand zone as it has, like we said, since um, the beginning of 2021, held it as support. We lost it a little bit in here, like, um, Around quarter three, like this drop was the lowest date we had in 22, uh, that October 13th, but rebounded, right? We got that pin bar, rebounded, beautiful, beautiful, all that. And so now we're basing again. And I want SPY, if the market continues down, which I truly believe that the market is, is going to continue down. It's, I believe that we're going to break this 370, right? Um, or breaking out of this range. We know that's a move that can get us down to the 370. That's a beautiful day trade. That's a beautiful day trade. However, what I will be watching for when I do enter this for a day trade, right? I'm going to buy contracts. I'm going to do, I'm going to take the time to do the research and I'm going to go find contracts that have an expiration date that is further out. Why? Because theta will not kill me. Theta will not kill me. It won't eat me up. It will not eat me alive, right? So if it does break below this 370, then I'll be taking it down to every support level that I kind of see across here, right? And I'll annotate it for you. Let's kind of annotate it, crudely draw it, right? Um, we'll see it kind of come down in here. We see the support. 
there, right? And then below there, we can see some support found here, right? We see this wick held it, held it, held it. This was the only candle that lost it, right? And that should bring us down if we lose that down to our trend line, down to our uh, primary trend line, which we could even adjust that to here as we should actually or as I should, right? So we can, if we break this 370, I'll be looking for 363. After that, I'll be looking for 357. And then my final that I'll be looking for is here around this 350, right? This is a beautiful setup for a swing trade, this path down. Now, there are a lot of ways where you can go and you can find these very affordable contracts. Actually, I'll leave those up. Where you can go and find like these very affordable contracts. And one method of that is bar chart. I absolutely love bar chart. Now, um, the free feature on bar chart, chef's kiss, amazing. It's amazing. You you would love it, right? Now I do pay for it and it's $30 a month. And the reason why is because of this one feature right here, y'all. I love to come over here. I'll type in whatever it is that I'm looking at and come over and look at the unusual options activity. And I'll switch it to change it where open interest is the highest first, right? Because we know as institutional traders, right? Because we don't do that retail stuff over here. So we know as institutional traders that smart money as their as a stock or ETF, whatever, is basing, that is actually smart money locking retail traders into that range because they are trying to buy them out. They're trying to trick them out. Have you ever sat there and just hard-headedly traded like in a range. And every time it gets to the top, you're thinking, um, and it's meeting this resistance level, you're thinking, okay, this is it, it's going to shoot up. And then all of a sudden it rejects and comes back down. Or it's down there at support level, and you're thinking, okay, this is it, it's going to break it. And all of a sudden it rejects or it bounces and goes back up, right? That's because their um, institutional traders are keeping retail traders within that range, faking them out, buying all the positions up at a very affordable prices, right? So there are two different types of bases that um, you can have. You can either have it, it in the accumulate and it's accumulating, and the, the accumulation base is going to be found at demand zones. It's going to be found at support. They're grabbing up all of these shares and contracts at really affordable prices, right? Because we buy low so we can sell high. They are buying it all up at these affordable prices and they're doing it slowly. They're accumulating slowly because they want to hide their hands, right? They don't, institutional traders don't want retail traders. They want to keep them uninformed, right? So they're buying all of them up. And then when they're ready for it to break out of the range, then that's when they'll do that. But they've been buying it up at an affordable price, right? So they're buying, slowly buying and holding their positions. So open interest volume is showing us the amount of shares and contracts that are being traded every day, right? Open interest is showing us the amount of um, options, contracts that are currently open and they're just, and people are holding the positions on those contracts, on those positions that they're in. So I like to switch it to highest open interest because I wanna see where's all this money sitting at, right? So we are already like looking for puts, right? So especially below like this 370. So I'm going to look for strike prices that's below the 370. And then over here, you see like it's showing you the bid, the ask, what it, what was the last trading price at? It's giving you all this information right here, the open interest, all of that. We love it. You see the expiration date. For swing trades, baby, don't buy no contract this month. If you swing it, if you enter into a swing position in January, if you don't get that contract out in February, get it in February, okay? Like seriously, why? Because of theta. Theta is a Greek and it's showing us time decay, right? So that theta, the further out the expiration date is, the less it's going to hurt us if it does pull back, right? And pullbacks are fine. Pullbacks are to be expected. But that's why we have stop losses and we chart our stops down. We will, um, I will be posting a very thorough charting class soon. So make sure you come back and check that out, okay? Make sure that you also stop right now and hit subscribe.
subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment. Let's get the algorithm going and more videos posted, right? Okay, so I am going through and I'm looking for something, a uh, put, right? That is not, that is below 370 strike price. And that is at least in February, the expiration date. So coming in here and we can see this is not bad. A 350 put that you can get in for like $2.61 for the premium. So you're going to be spending $261, right? That is not bad at all. But baby, look at, well, we don't really, I don't really like those because that's this month's expiration date, right? We want to give us like some theta. We want to give us some, some movement in here. This one isn't too bad, you know, like this June option now. Going down through there, but I I really love this one that three thirty put. This is or child. I'm going crisscross looking at these dates. Where is that two thousand and four? Or no, it was February two thousand and three. Yeah, this three fifty one. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. And to be totally honest, I wouldn't be mad at this three thirty put either or the three fifty put. You see, these are $15 premium. The premium is $15 and, uh, well, 15 cents and uh, 60 cents for the premiums, meaning you're going to spend $15 and $60 now, because that's the end of February. You're still going to make you some money, right? But we want to enter into positions that we'll be able to hold for a long time. Now, let's say this breaks out of this range to the upside. We can see that there is a gap there, right? would fill that gap. And again, I would be looking to take this. I'm looking at the support levels above it, right? So like this 393, um, there's another gap. I would just, you know, be looking kind of above here. So like this 401, which is also going to take you to the trend line, right? So me more than likely above 386, I'd be looking for like that move up to 400, this trend line. And that would be a beautiful time to start entering in for puts, right? Unless it does break above it and gets to this 408 again. But all we can do is watch and manage. We enter into these positions. We pick contracts that give us enough time to let it do what it needs to do. Buying weekly contracts will not do that, okay? It, that does not happen like that for swing trades, okay? Now, the next one that I want to look at is Apple. Now, Apple, baby, I've been in since this reject up here around 150 here. And it, and it was a beautiful, beautiful indeed. Matter of fact, it was this one, this rejection day. Now, let me show you why I felt confident holding it in, right? Uh, holding it even when it pulled back. This is because it is so important to know the difference between lows and swing lows and highs and swing highs, right? So this, the it dropped, it rejected that, right? Pulled back, dropped, pulled back. Now, what did we say about when we break levels? It will always pull back to retest it. So clearly when it broke this 136.83, this now becomes my support or my stop loss, right? Because I would never let it run back up over this 136.83 or close above that on my daily, I would never let it do that, especially not two days in a row, right? Because we need two confirmation candles. It doesn't matter what time frame you're on, you still need two candles to give you confirmation of what the next possible move could be, right? You still need at least two of those candles. So this cleanly rejected my stop loss, um, came back down, these two days pulled back and now this is my stop loss, right? Because we broke this next level. So my stop loss isn't going to stay up here at 136. I want to keep myself in profit as much as possible. So if this would have closed over this 129.65 in here, I would have gone ahead and got out and took that back because I got in up here around 150, right? So still would have done it, but we see it reject that today. So now what it is that I am watching for is if we look at this on the daily, first off, Apple broke. This is, I'll delete these for now because we can always click the back button. This in here was a symmetrical triangle, right? And we see since 2020, this is was a supply zone, right? It 
resistance, resistance, resistance four times. We break above it mid 2021 and it's held it beautifully. It has held it as support, um, except this time when it came to this low, the first like major low we had in 2022, like in June down there, that bottom quickly came back up here. I mean, can you imagine? This was beautiful. This was beautiful. Buying in here, down here around like in this 130 range for it to come back up to the 174. It was beautiful. Okay. And then when it rejected the 174, where'd it come? Right back down here to this 136. Held it in October, lost it in December, right? This is major. This That was major. Losing that 136.83 was very major. And you see, we're down here at this 125. Like it, it has had no, you know. So it finally broke that. And then, oops, oops, oops. <sighs> my levels. Let's put my levels back as well. I love that back button feature in there. Love that back button. So now all I can do is just look to the left. We have to look to the left and we got to look all the way back to the left to get a clear view. So we see right here that this was a double bottom, meaning that this used to be a demand zone, right? Because there are certain type of patterns that we expect to see at supply and demand zones. And at demand zones where we find support, we can expect to see triple bottoms, double bottoms, inverse head and shoulders, rounding bottoms, cup and handles, things like that, right? So we see this double bottom in here. Child, we almost there. This level is at like 123. We're $2 away from that, right? So a really good entry. Because then if it loses this 123 in here, the next support down is at this 118. We lose that down there is that 112. Now, do I think we're going to get all the way back? I don't know. We'll see. Do I think that we, we could, I could see 120. I could see 120. I really could. If not, Lord, child. Jesus keep us near the cross in 2023. Okay. Uh, protect my peace all 2023 because I'm gonna be on somebody island. I'm gonna be on my island in 2024. Okay, that's the goal. So this is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful swing trade that you can do in here. We come over here and we look at Apple. This is not financial advice. We come over here and we look at Apple, same method, open interest. We're looking for puts like below 123 with a strike price below 123. This is lovely, right? Again, it's in January, but y'all, you know, we kind of want to look for something um, further out than that. This 115 put, are the premiums a little high? Yeah, you're going to spend... Um, over $300 for one contract. However, on the, you know, is you gonna make you that bag? Yes. So it's all about leveraging in the right place. It's all about leveraging in the right place. But y'all see this method in here and how you can go through and do that. Now, this is far out of the money, 50, right? And you're buying them for $50, but you see his hands, his position sitting in there, right? Um, Oh, I like this one, the 110 put. I like this for $2.25. That one's really good. This 110 put February 2000 or February 17, 2023. That one's not bad, right? So there's methods, there's ways. And this is just one of them that you can go through and do. Now, the last one that I want to show y'all is Kroger. Love me some Kroger, y'all. Love which do I look at this camera in this? I think. I think that camera. Love me some Kroger. Okay. Kroger. Again, top-down analysis. We want to come in here and look, and we see in here on the daily. Okay. This is my primary trend lines. Why are they not the same color? I don't know. There we go. This is my primary trend. We see we're in a downtrend overall, and this is my secondary trend, right? Honestly, we could even say that this is the secondary trend. Ushin has to be the most dramatic dog I've ever met in my entire being. He got to be. He got to be. 
Okay. So we could call this because if I go down on a smaller time frame, right, you want to do your primary trend lines on the daily or higher and your secondary trend lines, um, like on the one hour to four hour and then your minor trend because you need all three to be successful. Okay. And your minor trend, you can kind of see it on the one hour, but try your best to chart it on the 30 minute or lower. Um, I like to use the 15 minute to chart for my minor trend. So we could even say that this is the uh, secondary trend line, the secondary trend, and then this is my minor, right? But see how it's all just coming in here and connecting and meeting up? Baby, when it break out of this, this whole little range in here, it's going to run. It's going to run. Whether it breaks to the upside or to the downside out of this, right? So we do see, let's go down like on this one hour time frame. We can see, you know, it came down in here and it's just basing. This is another, this was a rally, distribution, drop, base. Now, the reason why I could give this name distribution instead of saying base is because it dropped, right? So I know that it distributed up here. They, um, did, when, you dis when you're distributing, you're giving back to the market, right? They sold their position and then that's where the downturn came in. It's basing now. We won't know what if it's going to end up being in an accumulation stage or a distribution stage until it breaks out of this range. So breaking out of this range to the upside is also going to be breaking my resistance trend line, right? So breaking out of this resistance trend line, so really like we'll say above 45 is going to be this move up here to this 45.68. Now, I know y'all like, well, that's not really a lot. Let's measure that. That's a 1.3% move. A 1.3% move on the in the on the chart is gonna get you. Now, this don't this ain't nothing to quote, right? You're gonna be looking at if you enter into a trade, you're gonna be looking at like 50, 60, 70 percent um, like in your profitability, you know? Like it just because it's saying it's a 1%, 1.3% move on the chart doesn't mean you're only gonna make 1% in profit. That's not how that works, okay? Your profit is going to be, you're you're going to be good in profit. It ain't going to be no little 10% profit because we don't do that in the family. We don't do 10% trades. We try not to, right? If the market makes us whatever, but we like those big trades. So that is a beautiful move. These small cap stocks, which Kroger is, a little bit of movement goes a long way. It goes a long way and we love to see it, right? So that'll be a beautiful move there. Or if it breaks below here, we know that we're going to see some resistance around here at 43.82, but we can definitely expect to see it come down to this 43.46, and it is my hope that we just bring it on down here to this demand zone um, around at this 42.76, which we can see is a very beautiful move, right? Now, I suggest taking all of that in if you have the ability to watch it and you're in tune with your uh, with your swing trading. If not, then very clearly, if you wait to take this below this 42.76 in here, or you could even just say 42 even, right? Because we see this double bottom in here. We see this double bottom making this a demand zone, right? This 42 down here to 40. Which, if we look at this, at this level, every time that it's broken like this 42, come down here to around this 40, 67 area, every time we have seen a gap in there, right? So that's letting us know that institutions moved institutions like moved in here, right? They placed very large orders. They released very large um buy orders because it gapped up. So we see this gap, gap, really big gap. So, and that's as it was going up, right? So imagine what it'll be when it loses that 42, the move that it'll make. It should very easily get us down there to that 4067. So if we measure that move out, mm -mm. 
using our measuring tool. So we'll say from like here to here, that's about a 3% move. Okay. All right. So those are some of the swing trades that I'm looking at y'all. And Kroger is, baby, Kroger is affordable on a good day, but we also want to make sure, I mean, on a, yeah, on a good day, Kroger's is affordable. But again, we just also want to make sure that we're putting ourselves in position in the right way. So what put would I suggest? I just don't want anything like this month because I really don't like um, buying contracts or like for my swing trades in the same month. That's just me though, right? These 120 expiration dates could definitely hit. Um, like this one isn't, um, if anything, well, yeah, you want the 40 put. I think it's trading below 40 now. No, it's at 44. That 40 put is not a bad, that would not be bad, in, you know. Not a bad price in there. Uh, and yeah, as I said uh, before, right, we have the tools to go in there. Like, look, this is in, this put, the strike price is at 42. You could get it at this 38. You spend in like $76 and it's going out in April, right? Those are great ones. But yes, so that is that as far as swing trades that I'm looking at into getting into. And I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure that you subscribe, like, comment, share, do all that good stuff. Help the girl out. Okay. And I'll see y'all next time.